Hello everybody, welcome back to the online course on computer organization and architecture. Now, we are in the module of fundamentals of digital computer. Now, we are in unit 3 and unit 3 is basically related to information representation and number system. In this unit, we are going to say how we are going to represent information for digital computer and the number system that we are going to use for our arithmetic. So, first of all we are going to cite the objective, what is the unit objective of this particular module. So, the first objective is your illustrate the number system of different radix system. So, this is in the knowledge level, just we are going to discuss everything in the knowledge level, so that we will we'll have the knowledge about the number system and we can use these things in digital computer. Objective 2, describe the method for integer representation, so this is in the comprehension level. So, when you see these things, you will be able to understand how we are going to represent integer in computer system. Objective 3, illustrate the method to represent the real numbers. This is also in comprehension level, we are going to see how we are going to deal with real numbers in computer. And objective 4, describe the representation of character. This is also in knowledge level, we are going to see how we are going to represent character in computer, because we have to deal with data processing and many a time we are going to work with string manipulation. Now, first we are going to talk about the number system. I think all of you know about the decimal number system, where the base of this number system is 10 or in general it is a radix is 10. Consider an example of decimal number is 75 and as a subscript we have written as 10. It means that the base of this number system is 10. So, now 75, how we are going to evaluate the value of 75? It is 7 into 10 to the power 1 plus 5 into 10 to the power 0. So, 70 plus 5 is it 75. Now, what is the binary equivalent of this particular 72? Now, whatever we are going to do, eventually we should get 75. So, I am not going to discuss about the conversion, just I am giving an example. So, 75 in decimal number system will be represented with 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 in binary number system. So, when we talk about the binary number system, then the radix or base of the number system is 2, which is given as a subscript over here. Now, in base 10 system, it is of radix 10 and it is a multiple of 10, but in case of your binary number system, it is multiple of 2. So, in that particular case, the way you are saying that fifth is the 0th position, 7 is the unit position of our decimal number system. So, similarly here also we are going to have this position, this 1 is the 0th position like that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this 1 is in the 6th position. So, ultimately what is the equivalent value of this binary number? 1 into 2 to the power 6 plus 0 into 2 to the power 5 which is 0 plus 0 into 2 to the power 4 which is 0 plus 1 into 2 cube plus 0 into 2 square plus 1 into 2 to the power 1 plus 1 into 2 to the power 0. So, this is 2 to the power 6 is equal to 64, 2 cube is 8, 64 plus 8 72, 2 to the power 1 is 2, 72 plus 2 74 and 2 to the power 0 is 1, so plus 1 75. So, uh, eventually we are getting the decimal equivalent 75. So, in this way we can represent every numbers, every decimal numbers in binary representation. Like that we are having different radix system. As for example, I am giving another base system which is your 8, base is 8. So, now if you consider this 75 in decimal number system that equivalent octal number system. So, base 8 number system is known as your octal number system, it is 1 1 3. So, that means 1 into 8 square plus 1 into 8 to the power 1 plus 3 into 8 to the power 0. So, 8 square is 64 plus 8 72 plus 3 75. So, this is the way we can have a conversion from one number system to the another number system. Decimal to any other number system is uh, very easy, very simple. What we can do? Simply divide that number by that particular base. So, in that particular case 75. So, this is in radix 10 or base 10, we want to convert it to octal number system. Then what we are going to do? We will divide it by 8. 8 9 is 
72 and remainder is 3. Again we are going to divide 9 by 8, 8 ones are 8 and remainder is 1. Again we are going to divide it by 8 then result is 0, remainder is 1. So, in that particular case we are going to get 1, 1, 3 in octal number system. So, 75 in decimal number system is equivalent to 1, 1, 3 in octal number system. This is the way we can represent or we can convert every decimal number to any other digit system. So, similarly when we are going for the binary number system then 75 will be divided by 2 and in that particular case the way we are dividing you can say that this is coming in the unit position and like that it will increase. So, it is 1, 1, 3. So, now when we are going to talk about a number system we are having two terms called least significant bit and most significant bit. M as B and L as B. This is basically when we are going to talk about the bit, it basically talk about the binary number system. We are going to take single bit, but for any radix system we can say it is your most significant digit and least significant digit. As for example, in your 113 in base 8, 3 is the least significant digit and 1 is the most significant digit in this particular case because you just see that this 1 is multiplied by 8 square. So, weightage is more and this 3 is multiplied by 8 to the power 0 which is 1. So, weightage is less. So, in that case we are having that least significant digit as 3 and most significant digit as 1 for 1 1 3 in octal number system. Similarly, when we are going to talk about the binary number system we say it is least significant bit and most significant bit. So, in this particular case the 1 or bit that we are having in the most right hand side is known as your least significant bit because it is weighted least 2 to the power 0 and the 1 that we are having in the left hand side most left hand side is your most significant bit because the weightage is more over here 2 to the power 6. So, this is the convention about the least significant bit and most significant bit. Now, how many numbers or how many symbols we require for a particular number system? So, it is basically related to the base of the number system. So, if we are using a decimal number system, decimal number system in that case base is 10. So, to represent these things we need 10 different symbol and we know that those symbol we are using 0, 1, 2, 3 like up to 9 we are using. Okay. So, these are the 10 different symbol that we are using in decimal number system. So, in case of binary number system since base is 2 we need only 2 symbols and that 2 symbols that we are using in binary number system is your 0 and 1. So, the binary number is represented with the help of 0 and 1 only. When we come to octal number system in that particular case the base is 8. So, we need 8 different symbols. So, what are the symbols that we are using? We are using from 0 to 7 these are the 8 different symbol we are using in octal number system. Like that we can go for any radix or any base. One important number system that we are having is your hexadecimal. So, in computer system sometimes we represent our information in hexadecimal form. So, in hexadecimal the base is 16. So, we need 16 different symbols. So, in hexadecimal system the base is 16 and we need 16 different symbol to represent it. Now, what are those 16 different symbols that we use in our hexadecimal number system? So, from 0 to 9 we are using those symbol to represent 0 to 9, 0, 1, 2 like that. Since it is having base 16, so we can represent 16 different numbers in this particular number system. So, 0 to 9 10 has gone now we are having 6 more sim number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So, to represent those number in hexadecimal system we use the letter from our alphabet and these letters are your A, B, C, D, E and F. So, this is the symbols that we use in our hexadecimal number system. So, 0 to 9 10 digit and A to F 6 character. So, total 16 character. 
So, if we write some numbers like that say d 1 2 say this is an hexadecimal number and we are using this thing. Then what is the decimal equivalent of these things? This is your d is your 10, 11, 12, 13. So, this is 13 into 16 square plus 1 into 16 to the power 1 plus 2 into 16 to the power 0. So, whatever you are going to get this is the decimal equivalent of this particular hexadecimal number. So, conversion from any number system to decimal number system is very easy. So, like that from decimal also you can convert to any number system just by divide by the base of that number. So, this is the way we can just represent our numbers. Now, we are going to see how we are going to represent integers. So, this is 0's and 1's only. So, we we'll say whatever we are representing we say it is a bit and bit is nothing but binary digit that means, we are representing 0 or 1. So, these are the binary digit and already we have seen how we are going to write numbers in binary number system. So, for example, here we are giving 41. So, in that particular case, so 41 is having binary equivalent 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1. So, that means, you can say that this is these are the 3 ones are coming. So, these are going to have going to give us the effect. So, it is basically 2 to the power 5 plus 2 cube plus 2 to the power 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 2 to the power 5 is your 32, 2 cube is your 8 plus 2 to the power 0 is 1. So, this is equal to 41. So, this is the way we are going to represent our integer in binary number system. So, there are some issues now we have to see how to give the minus sign to have the negative numbers, how to put a decimal point for real numbers and secondly we have to see what is the range of numbers. Okay. So, basically say if I ask you to do something with pen and paper then we do not have any limitation, but when we are going to work with our digital system or you say that we are going to work with digital computer then always we are restricted by a range and these range depends on the bit number of bit that they are using to represent the number. So, in this particular case say 41, so in this particular case we are using 8 bits. So, when we are using 8 bits that means, we are restricted by a number up to a particular limit only we can go. So, if we increase the number of bit then we can go for more ranges and secondly we are going to see how we are going to represent the negative numbers there are having two way of doing it one is your sign magnitude and second one is your two's complement. Just as an example I am giving here as a size of my data. So, if we are working with your size 8 that means, we are working with the data size of 8 bit. So, in that particular case the combination may be all zeros to all ones. So, in that particular case all ones is going to represent can you calculate it this is your 0 to 7 that means, 2 to the power 7 plus 2 to the power 6 plus 2 to the power 5 plus 2 to the power 4 plus 2 cube plus 2 square plus 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 0. So, this is your 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. We have to be you have to be accustomed with this particular 2 to the power of something because many a time we are going to look it. So, this is I am going to get 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1 and if I add up all those things I am going to get 255. So, when we are going to work with 8 bit numbers then my range will go from 0 to 255. Okay. Similarly, if I am having a 12 bit numbers now my range is going to increase like that if I am going for 32 bit numbers that means, we are going to work with 32 bits at a time. So, nowadays you used to say that my computer my processor is a 32 bit processor that means, I can work with a 32 bit numbers. I say that my computer is or my processor is a 64 bit processor then we can handle 64 bit 
at a time. So, in that particular case, we can say that these are the binary representation for 8 bit, this is the minimum number, this is the maximum number, if we are going to work with the positive line only. And if this is 32 bit, this is the minimum one, this is the maximum one. So, my range is in decimal is of for 8 bit numbers, it will form 0 to 255, for 12 bit number, it will 0 to 4095. So, this is 4095 and when I am going for 16 bit number, it is 0 to 2 to the power 16 minus 1. Basically, 255 is nothing but I can say 2 to the power 8 minus 1, 2 to the power 8 is a 256 minus 1, 255. And if it is your 20 bit, then it will go up to 2 to the power 20 minus 1, and in case of 32 bit, it will go to 2 to the power 32 minus 1. So, that similar information I am representing in another number system, which is your hexadecimal. Now, you just see what I am saying, this is your 8 bit number all zeros to all 1. So, all 1 in decimal it becomes 255, in hexadecimal it is your FF, FF means 15, F represent 15, 15 into 16 to the power 1 plus 15 into 16 to the power 0. So, in that particular case, you will get that this is nothing but 255 in decimal. Now, when we are going to discuss that representation of number in computer or in your binary system or say <coughs> binary digit, most of the times we, we are going to take help of hexadecimal number system, because it is having one advantage. Say, so, when I am going to work with 32 bits number, I have to write 32 bits, okay, all 32 bits 0 or maybe combination of 0 and 1, which is slightly difficult. Similarly, when we are going to work with 8 bits, we are going to write 8 bits all zeros to all 1. Now, again, if I see how to do it in your decimal number, then we have to have slight your these things calculation. Now, this is the calculation we have to do, which is slightly time consuming for any number. So, in that case for hexadecimal representation it is very simple. You just see if I am having a 4 bit number, then all 0 if I am having then this is your 0 and if it is all 1 you can say that 8 plus 4 12, 12 plus 2 14, 14 plus 1 15. So, this is your 15. So, we need total 16 defined symbol 0 to 9 and A to F f is 16 and a is 10. So, now to represent this number, the maximum number of bits that we need is your 4 bits. So, when we are having a binary representation, we simply group them in the 4 bits. So, in that particular case, what will happen? We are going to say that this all 1 is going to represent f and all 1 is going to represent f. So, the range is from 0 0 to f f. When we are having 12 bit numbers, then it will go from 0 0 to f f f. So, number of bit divided by 4 is going to give me the number of symbol needed for hexadecimal representation. So, if I go back to one of my earlier slide, so in 41, I am saying that this is the binary representation. Now, what is the hexadecimal representation? 0 0 1 0, this is your representing 2 1 0 0 1 this is basically 8 plus 1 9, so 29. So, 41 in decimal number is equal to 29 in hexadecimal number system or in binary number system we can say 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1. So, if we are going to work with 8 bit numbers, we have to write 8 symbols in binary representation, but in hexadecimal we are going to use only 2 symbols, 2 digits. So, in most of the time we are going to represent our information in hexadecimal for understandability and for readability, but when you think about how it is working in the computer, basically it is working with this particular binary digit only in bit pattern 0 and 1, but for our readability we can write something in our hexadecimal notation. Now, how to represent integers? So, in that particular case we are talking about the number system. Now, say if I am having 8 bit numbers, so I am having a combination of 0 and 1 and 8 bit 8 symbols. So, in that particular case we are having 256 different symbols or combinations. So, this combination will go from 0 to 
255. Okay. So, if we are going to represent only positive numbers, then what will happen? I can use all those 256 characters to represent positive numbers from 0 to 255. But if we are going to consider about a negative number also, so if this is the number line, this is 0 and this is your positive side and this is your negative side. So, when we are going to work with a negative number, then what will happen? Whatever 256 different bit patterns we are having, some of the bit patterns need to be reserved for negative numbers also. That means, in positive number, when we are only dealing with positive number, then we are going from 0 to say 255, but when we are coming for negative numbers, then some of those symbols have to be used for negative numbers also. That means, gradually my range is going to reduce in the positive side, maybe it will be half over here. So, I can say this is your 127 and this side I may have 127. So, this is basically 127 plus 127, 254 with 0 255. So, we are having total 256 symbols, but here we are using 255, one more symbols are still remaining left. We will see how we are going to deal with that particular representation. So, basically we are with 8 bit numbers, we can handle 256 defined numbers. So, if it is your only positive numbers, we are going to deal from 0 to 255, but if we are going to handle negative numbers, then range will reduce, it will go from some negative 127 to positive 127 or maybe plus minus 1. Now, for that, we are having two ways of representing this number, one is your sign magnitude. So, in that particular case, what will happen? Whatever bit pattern we have, it will be divided into two part, one part is known as your sign and other part is your magnitude. So, in that particular case, what will happen? Say for 8 bit numbers, 1 bit will go from your sign and 7 bit will go for magnitude. So, if it is your 8 bit numbers. If it is a 16 bit number, then 1 bit will go for sign and 15 bit is going to represent the magnitude of that particular number. So, here what happen? What convention we are using? 0 means the positive numbers and 1 means the negative number. So, in that particular case, for example, you just see that plus 18. So, this is the magnitude 10010. 0, 0, 1, 0. This is 2 to the power 4 plus 2 to the power 1, 16 plus 1, 18. So, similarly, this is the magnitude of the number. Again, it is 18, but now we are saying that 0 is my indicating the sign bit, it is a positive number, so it is plus 18. And this bit, most significant bit is, is 1. 1 represent a negative number. So, this bit pattern is going to give me minus 1. So, in that particular case, now we can represent the numbers, positive number as well as negative numbers. Now, in that particular case, now what will happen? If you take this particular 7 bit, then it can the value, that numeric value that it can have go up to 127. So, with 0, I can go up to plus 127 and with most significant bit 1, we can go up to 127. So, this is 127 plus 127. So, total 254. Now, we are having total 256 bit pattern. What is the remaining bit pattern? You just see that if you look into it, what we are getting? We are having that bit pattern 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all 0. This is representing 0 or maybe 1, So, this is also if you look into this magnitude, magnitude is always 0, but with this bit 0 and 1, we are getting positive 0 and negative 0. That means, there are two representation of 0. So, in this particular case, we are representing 256 different numbers, but out of that valid numbers is 255, we are having two representation of 0. So, there are, we may look to eliminate this also, because why we should use two bit pattern to represent the same number. So, for that we may go for some other representation which is known as your two's complement. So, in this two's complement, just I am giving one example, just only getting four numbers. Now, in that particular case, what will happen? This is the representation. If I am having 0, then these are all zeros. Plus 1 is simple that magnitude 1, 
1 0 1 1 like that if I go for positive 4 then it will be 1 0 0 like that. And the negative number is coming as minus 1 is representing as your all ones, then minus 2 is coming as your all 1 and 0 and minus 3 is coming as your all 1 after that means 6 1 0 1. So, basically what happens it is basically I the maximum number is your 255 or 8 bit representation that 255 is going to represent my minus 1. Now, you just count down and go downwards then 554 is going to give me minus 2, 253 will give me your minus 3, then 252 will give me minus 4 like that. And from 0 if you go in upward direction say 1 is going to represent 1, 2 is going to represent 2, 3 is going to represent 3 like that. So, this is a simple way we can visualize it. So, if we are having a number in 2's complement form we are going to represent in this particular way. Now, how to do it? We are having one issue called one's complements and two's complement. So, if I consider a particular number says 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. This is a number that I am considering. Then what is the one's complement? One's complement basically it says that you complement all the bits of this particular number. So, I am going to get 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 1 0 0. So, this is the 1 complement of this particular number and what is 2's complement? It says that in case of 2's complement whatever you are getting in 1 complements add 1 to it. So, what I am going to get 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1. Okay. So, this is the 2's complement. Now, if this is my some number given number I can get the ones complement just complementing all the bits and I think in digital system we can do it by using a NAND get or maybe using a NOT get that we have discussed these things in our digital block. So, after that we are going to add one to it finally, we are going to get it. Now, if I go back to my previous slide you just see that we are talking about we are taking this particular number 1. So, if I am going to take the ones complement I am going to get 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 0. Now, if I add 1 to it then I am going to get 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1. Now, you just see whatever I am getting over taking the number after looking into the two's complement I am getting this representation. So, generally we are saying that this is my positive 3 and other one is my negative 3. So, after taking the ones two's complement we are going to get the negative representation of the given number. So, this is the terms that we are going to say and why we are coming with this particular number system and why we call it complements. You just see that I am taking this particular number 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1. Okay. Now, I am taking the two's complement what I am getting 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1. Okay. Now, in that particular case just I am going to add these two numbers then what I am going to get 1 and 1 0 we are having a carry 1 1 and 1 0. So, I am getting a carry 1. So, I am finally, 1 carry out. So, we are getting this number. Now, what will happen we are working with 8 bit numbers that means, we are having provision to store this particular 8 bits only and this is a carry out which is not a part of my number because I can represent the number with the help of 8 bit only. So, carry cannot be incorporated. So, we are not going to consider this particular one. So, finally, what I am getting the after adding this two number we are getting 0. So, when we add two numbers and if the result is 0 then what we say that one is the negation of the other because if I add two numbers a plus minus a then we are going to get result as 0. So, this is the principle that we are using. So, in two's complement form we can use we get the negative of a given number or if we are giving a negative number then we are going to get the positive of that particular number. So, we are going to use two's complement. This is related to any number system say what we can do if I look into these things that binary decimal number system also in the particular case also we can have this particular concept of complement. 
So, in that particular complement, here we are saying that just take the complement that means, 0 will be replaced by 1, 1 will be replaced by 0. This is basically the subtract the number from the maximum digit that we have in that number system. So, this is basically 1 minus 0 is going to give 0. So, now if I take any decimal number system say 27, then what we are going to do? We are going to subtract this number from the maximum digit which is 9. So, 9 minus 7 is going to give me 2, just say I am going to say that this is 37. So, this is your 9 minus 3 is 6, okay, 62. Now, if I am going to add 1 to it, then I am going to get 63. Now, you add up 37 and 63, what you are going to get? 0, 9, 10. Now, we are working with 2 digit only. That way, here we are working with 8 bits, we are using a 2 bit, uh, 2 digit only. So, this digit cannot be stored. So, eventually what will happen? Adding these two numbers is going to give me the result 0. So, that means, we can say that 1 is the negation of the other if we are using the number system your tens complement. So, for decimal number system also, we can use that complement, tens complement. In case of tens complement, first we are going to get the nines complement. That way we are getting the ones complement. This is the nine complements and after adding one, we are going to get the tens complement. So, this is the principle we are using to represent the negative numbers. So, already I have explained these things, what is the benefit? So, in this particular case, first take the complement of given number, then add 1 to the LSB, then we are going to get the negation of that given number. Now, what already we have seen, this is a special case, already we have seen that. Now, in that particular case, negative 0 is equal to your positive 0, that means we are having only one representation of 0. So, in sign magnitude form what will happen? We are having minus 127 to plus 127 total 256 number along with that 2 representation of 0, 2 ok. So, total 256 symbols. Now, here in this particular case after adding it since we are going to discard this particular carry out bit because we cannot store it because we are working with 8 bit numbers. So, finally, positive 0 and negative 0 is becoming same. So, we are having only one representation of 0. Other one you just see what will happen now in that particular case if I am going to look for this particular combination because it is coming down now what I am saying that you start with all 1 then 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 like that you decrease it and finally, we are going to get this particular number. So, for this particular number, if I take the ones complement, then I am going to get this representation and twos complementation, I am going to get this particular number. So, basically twos complement should give me the negation of that particular number. So, if this is a particular representation, then this should be the negation of these things, but both are turning up to be same. So, this is a special case and we are going to handle it as like that this representation will be treated as your minus 127, oh sorry minus 128. Now, why you are talking minus 128? Why you are not treating these things as your plus 128? Because this is an extra symbol. Now, we are getting minus 127 to 0 and to plus 127. Now, these are the 255 different bit pattern we are using. Now, this is the bit pattern it is remaining left. So, we can use this particular bit pattern to represent another number and we are saying that we are representing it as a minus 128, but why not plus 128. So, in that particular you will find that just concentrate on this particular most significant bit it is 1. So, in the representation when we are going to represent the number with two's complement, you will find that positive numbers will start with 0 that means, most significant are bits are is 0 and negative numbers will start with 1 that means, most significant bit of 1. Since, this bit pattern is starting with 1, so we are going to treat this as a negative numbers and we say that it is going to represent minus 128 not plus 128 that means, now my range go from 
minus 128 to plus 127 total 256 different representation. So, if you come back to this particular uh, slide you see that for negative numbers this most significant bit is always 1 and for positive number this most significant bit is 0. So, that is why when we are coming for this particular special case 1 all zeros that will represent the negative number and the negative number is your minus 128. Now, what is the range of number already I have mentioned it. So, in that particular case uh, for integer sorry for positive number we can go from 0 to 256, 255 if it is an 8 bit number. So, for negative numbers if you are going to handle a complete range of your integers positive and negative then for 8 bit numbers the range will go from minus 128 to plus 127 and for 16 bit number it will go from 32768 to 32767. So, minus 32768 to plus 32767 and basically it is in 2 to power 2 to the power 15 minus 1 this is 2 to the power 7 minus 1 because we are using 7 bit to represent my magnitude and this bit is again going to give me the indication about the negative and positive numbers. So, it is basically 2 to the power n minus 1 to minus 2 to the power 15. So, if we are going to work with n bit number then my range will be o minus 2 to the power n minus 1 to 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 1. So, this is the range that we are going to have when we are going to use two's complement form. So, this is just in a tabular form we are writing this two's complement number in 4 bit number. So, this is your 0 then 7 these are the positive number and minus 1 will be represented by all 1 and it is decremented and finally, minus 8 will be a 1 0 0. Now, just look for some operation. So, I am giving that 7 plus 7. Now, how we are going to edit say and it is a 4 bit numbers. Just remember that we are having a 4 bit numbers. So, 7 is your nothing but 0 1 1 0 1 1 1. So, this is 7 and 7. Now, if I add them then what I am going to get 0 1 1 1. Okay. This is the things that I am getting. Now, you just said that minus 7 plus minus 7. Now, what is the representation of minus 7 is to complementation 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1. So, this is your 1 0 0 1 and 1 0 0 1. So, if I add them then what I am going to get 0 1 0 0 1. So, this is a carry out we cannot consider it because we are working with 4 bit number. Now, consider that 7 plus minus 1 7 is your 0 1 1 1 and what is minus 1? Minus 1 is, is all 1 1 1 1 1. Now, this is your 0 1 1 0 1 again I cannot consider these things and 1 plus minus 7. So, 1 is your 0 0 0 1 and what is my minus 7? 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1. So, this is your 0 1 0 1. Okay. Now, you just see what we are getting actually. So, in this particular case this is your plus 7, this is your plus 7. Now, we are working with two's complement. So, 1 1 1 0 what does it means? 1 1 1 0 is your minus 2. Here this is your minus 7 minus 7. Now, 0 0 1 0 what I am getting? 2 these are decimal equivalent. This is your 7 and this is your minus 1. So, what I am getting 0 1 1 0 which is your 6. This is your 1 and this is minus 7. So, what I am getting 1 0 1 0. So, what is that 1 0 1 0 is your minus 6. So, I am getting 
minus 6. So, just I am calculating it just so it. Now, what will happen say when I use minus 7 to minus 1 I should get minus 6 and I am getting it. So, this is a correct result. When I am using these things minus 7 and minus 1 I am getting plus 6. So, this is also correct result, but when I am using minus 7 plus minus 7 what should be my result? My result should be 14, but as a result I am getting 2 only. Again when I am using plus 7 and plus 7 I should get plus 14, but what I am getting over here? I am getting minus 2. Okay. So, in this particular case, so whatever result we are getting, these are not correct, because we are working with 4 bit numbers and we can handle with 4 bits only. So, in that particular case, these are not the correct result, because we know that for 4 bit numbers, my range is from minus 8 to plus 7. So, this is the range, but these are the valid numbers, but after adding, I am getting a bigger number if it is a positive line side it is your 14 no doubt about it 8 plus 4 plus 2, but since we are going to handle negative number. So, eventually it is represented as minus 2. So, these are the two result that I am getting which is not correct and this situation is basically known as our overflow because we cannot handle plus 14 over here this is the range. So, this is your overflowing the number. So, this is the overflow situation, but in these two cases I do not have any problem and what I am getting the correct result I think these are the two correct results. So, this is basically we should talk about the overflow situation that means, we are trying to perform some operation computer is doing it or digital system is doing it and eventually it is giving me some result, but this result is wrong I cannot consider it. So, we are going to say these are the overflow situation. Secondly, if I look for this particular four calculation one thing you just see that here it is having a carry out this one is also having a carry out it is generating some carry, but other two combinations are not generating any carry, but this carry out is 0. So, in that particular case what we will say that these two operation is generating some carry for me, but one is your correct result second one is not correct result. So, we are having some situation called whether after performing some operation whether it generates carry or not or secondly whether it is a valid result or not, if the valid result is not valid then we say it is an overflow situation. So, these are the terms we are going to use while going to design our computer. Now, another important issue is just see that I have given one more equation that you perform 7 minus 5. So, in that particular case how I am going to perform this operation 7 minus 5 I know that it can be done with your 7 plus minus 5 what is 7 of binary representation 0 0 0 1 and what is the representation of minus 5 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1. If you add these two things then what you are going to get 0 1 0 0 1. Okay. 7 minus 5 is 2. So, I am getting 5 only. So, this is your 7 and this is your minus 5 because we know that result is 2 I am getting it. Now, what is the observation over here? You just see when we are representing in 2's complement form to do the subtraction, we can use the adder circuit itself. Just take the negative representation of the number and after that add them together, and this is the way we used to do. So, in 2's complement form, if we are using 2's complement representation, basically adder circuit can be used to evaluate the subtraction also. So, in this particular case 7 minus 5 we are getting result as 2 and you just see that it is also generating 1 carry. So, carry is generated since it is a valid result. So, it is not an overflow. So, this is also valid result. Now, when you are going to say that it is an overflow just you observe this particular result and from that we can conclude it actually you just see that this is having carry 0 and this is your carry out is 0. So, in that particular case what I can say the carry into the most significant bit and the final carry out. 
So, this is the carry in to the most significant bit and this is the carry out. This is the carry in to the most significant bit and this is the carry out. Okay. So, these are overflow situation. This is the carry in to the most significant bit and this is the carry out of the operation. Here also this is the carry in to the most significant bit and this is the final carry out. Now, you just see in these two situation these are my correct result here also I am having this. Okay. Now, the observation is like that if the carry in to the most significant bit and the final carry out if they are same then we do not have any overflow. So, these are the same situation. Okay. These are the same situation. So, we do not have overflow, but in case of overflow these two bits are different. So, it is 0 and final carry out is 1, it is your carry in is 1 and final carry out is 0. So, if these two situation is different then we are going to get an overflow and this is nothing but my exclusive OR scenario. That means, with the help of one exclusive OR gate I can check whether overflow occurs or not. So, what I can say this is the carry out and this is the carry out final and this is the carry into MSB most significant bit which is a sign bit. So, with the help of this exclusive OR gate we can detect whether overflows occurs or not. So, these are the situation. So, what I am saying that here I am talking about overflow. So, this is the way I can detect the overflow. I have seen whether it has generated carry or not. So, with this carry out bit I can check whether carry has been generated or not and sign bit what is the sign of the result. Basically, this most significant bit is going to give me the sign bit. Okay. So, I will just look into this particular position and see what is the number is positive or negative. So, since it is 1, so it is a negative number and this is going to represent minus 2. Since this bit is 0, so it is going to represent a positive number, so this is plus 2. So, like that these are the three information we can collect when I am going to perform addition operation in two's complement form and we require those information while implementing our computer. So, we have seen how to represent positive numbers, how to represent integers that means positive as well as negative. Now, we are going to see how we are going to represent the real numbers. So, how we are going to represent real number it is again everything you have to deal with your binary number system only 0 and 1 and we should know what is the decimal equivalence of a real numbers if we are going to represent it in a binary number system. So, in that particular case just look for this particular simple example. So, this is the decimal point. So, that is why this is the fractional point. So, how we are going to get it? This number is your 2 to the power 4 plus 2 to the power 0 and these are decimal. So, this is plus 2 to the power minus 1, 2 to the power minus 2, 2 to the power minus 3 and 2 to the power minus 4. So, this is your 4 plus 1, this is 9. So, you know 1 0 0 1 is 9 and 2 to the power minus 1 is your 0 0.5, this is your 2 to the power minus 1, what is your 2 to the power minus 2, this is your 0 0.25, half of this. 1 2 to the power minus 3, this is half of this, so 0 0.125. So, this is basically 0 0.5 plus 0 0.125. So, this is your 0 0.625. So, finally, the my number is your 9.625. So, this is the decimal representation, and finally, we are having this binary representation. So, everything we have to do binary representation. Now, main issue is now where I am going to keep this particular decimal number. So, if it is like that I am having a 8 bit numbers we are keeping 4 bits for before decimal and 4 bits after before decimal then what will happen then I can go up to 15 only if it is a positive number and if it is a negative number then I can go from minus 7 point something to minus 7 point something and what is that point something we can simply add those particular numbers and we can get it. So, if I am going to have these things, we will say this is a fixed point. We are finding or we are putting the position of decimal point as a fixed one and it will always appear at a fixed position. 
but it is very limited in computer system we are not using it but another one is moving it means it is according to our numbers we will adjust that particular decimal point which is basically known as your floating point number fixed point representation and floating point representation in case of moving it is basically floating point representation and i think if you are writing some program in your c language i think you know about that floating point number so this is the floating now how we are going to do it this is basically in floating point number we use this particular representation so most significant bit is always used to indicate the sign bit whether it is positive numbers or negative numbers so zero means positive one means negative then we are having some exponent part we say it is a bias expo exponent we will see it and we are having the significant part okay that means if i am going to represent in decimal number system say plus 23 into 10 to the power 5 then what will happen this is the exponent part and this is the significant part or the mantissa part okay so this is the number representation either we are having plus minus then decimal point sorry here decimal point will put it over here and into 2 to the power exponent so always decimal is having over here now this is the way we are going to represent now in negative uh, binary number system also those things will be represented in my binary number system so it is having exponent part and significant or mantissa part and along with that sign part now just look for this particular representation so what is the size of this particular representation this is your 32 bits okay one bit is for sign bit, eight bit is for your exponent and twenty three bit is for significant. So, now if you look into this number representation say 1.1010001 into 2 to the power 10100. Okay. So, if this is the number that we want to represent in our floating point representation then what will happen? in that particular case we have to see what is the significant part this significant part is your 1010001 1010001 so 1001001 so this is the significant part and it is having total 23 bits so remaining part will be all zeros so this is basically same numbers positive and negative positive exponent and negative exponent now, what is the exponent over here you just see here I am talking about 2 to the power. So, this is your 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So, 16 plus 4, 20. So, basically we are talking about 2 to the power 20. So, this is the representation 2 to the power 20 and if I convert it, it will come like that in decimal equivalent the way we are doing. Now, in this particular case we are having 2 to the power 20, but what we have stored over here you just see what is this equivalent? 1, 2, so basically this is your 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 plus 32, 64, 128. So, finally, this is the number that we are getting. So, 128 plus 19, so we are getting 147. So, what we are storing basically in the exponent part we are storing 147, but basically we are looking for 20, 2 to the power 20, but instead of 20 we are storing it your 147. So, this is called bias exponent because now exponent may go positive as well as negative. So, instead of doing these things what will happen? We represent everything in the positive number and it will be biased by some numbers. So, in this representation it is biased by 128 that means whatever number we are storing over here that will be that to find out the exact exponent that 127 will be subtracted from that. So, 147 minus 127 what I am getting this is 20. So, this is the 20 that we are getting. So, this is the bias exponent. Now, just look for the negative now this is the negative exponent this is your minus 20, but for minus 20 what we are storing? 1 plus 2 plus 8, 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. So, these are the things that we are storing in the exponent. So, what I am getting 96, 
plus 8 1 0 4 5 6 1 0 7. Okay. Now, we are storing 1 0 7 in the bias exponent. So, what is the exact value we are storing? So, what we have to do? We subtract 127 from 107. So, 107 minus 127. So, we are going to get minus 27. So, this is the way we are storing our floating point numbers. So, it is having three component one is your sign bit, then bias exponent and significant. And what we are storing users see observe these things. We want to store 1.101001 and we have stored this particular information in the significant part. We have not stored that 1 and decimal point. That means, we are not going to store the decimal point, it is implicit and where is the decimal point? Whatever we have stored in the significant, that will be appended by 1 point that number. So, this is 1 point something, then what will happen? We are not storing it, this information, whatever we have stored, that will be always considered as 1 point that number. So, that means, if I am going to give, going to store some number, then what will happen? First, we have to normalize it and the normalization will come like that, decimal point will be always after one digit. So, this is the normalization. In decimal number system also, we do the normalization. So, these are the things that we are having. So, mantissa will be stored in your two's complaint form, exponent will be stored in your bias exponent. Okay. So, this is basically, it will be stored in the bias exponent and after that, what will happen? Some values we need to subtract, it may be from 128 or 127 for 8 bit numbers. So, we must understand these three component while we are going to find out what is the exact value that we are storing in this particular representation. So, for this particular representation say if I want to store this particular number 1.638125 into 2 to the power 20 basically in binary representation we are going to have these things. So, for that this part we are going to put in a mantissa or the significant part and whatever we are having this particular exponent, it should be according to the bias that we have used. Here we have used bias as 127. So, whatever value we have, we have to add 127 to it and store that particular number as an exponent and along with that we are going to store the sign bit. So, if you know the information, then very well we can find out what is the value of this particular number and how we are going to get the value. Basically, it is in normalized form this particular information 1 and dot we are not storing that remaining part we are storing. So, this is the way we are going to do it because this is similar thing. So, whatever we are talking about. So, in floating point number it should be usually normalized that is exponent is adjusted. So, that leading bit MSB of mantissa is 1. So, leading bit is 1. So, this is similar to your decimal number system. So, if I am going to talk about say 5 1 2 3 I can look for 5 point 1 2 3 into 10 cube. So, this is the way we have to look into it. So, it have to be first normalized one the number is there is only one bit prior to that decimal point and after that we are having the mantissa and exponent whatever exponent we are going to store it should be in the bias form because why you are using the bias notation just to avoid the negative numbers stored negative numbers in the exponent point. Now, what are the ranges of your that floating point numbers? Again, it depends on the number of bits. So, here we are talking about the 8 bit numbers and in this 8 bit numbers, we have to talk about what is the 8 bit exponent. So, if the exponent is 8 bit, that means we can go up to 2 to the power 256. So, that means you can go up to 2 to the power 256. That means, if I going to convert it to the decimal number, you will find that you can go up to 10 to the power 77. So, if it is a 32 bit representation and we are going to use 8 bit for exponent, then what we are going to get? We are going to get range up to 10 to the power 77. Now, what is the accuracy? An accuracy basically talk about what is the changes of the value if you are going to change the least significant bit. So, in that particular case, we are using 23 bit in our mantissa, but when we are going to convert it to the binary numbers, it may go, we may have that 24 bit, 25 bit 
after decimal point. So, but we cannot store it. So, that means we are losing some information, but these are the least significant bit. Okay. So, up to 23 bit we can store it, but 24 bit we cannot store. So, that what is the changes of the numbers if we change this particular least significant bit? Either it will go from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So, that is why that accuracy is your 2 to the power minus 23, that means in decimal number it is your 10 to the power minus 7, that means about 6 decimal places we can have the accuracy beyond that we cannot have the accuracy. So, you just see that if we increase the number of bits that range will increase as well as accuracy will also increase. So, these are the two issues that we are having range and accuracy in floating point number. So, we are having a standard called IEEE standard and in most of the cases we use this particular standard because we should not come up with our own number system because globally it should be accepted. So, we are having a body called IEEE Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers it is a global body and for many systems for digital computers, even for your computer networks, even for your communication they give the standard, they freeze the standard and after that all parties use those particular standard. So, for floating point representation also that IEEE has given a format which is known as your 754, IEEE 754 format and in that particular format they are having two format one is your 32 bit and another one is your 64 bit because say if you are going to construct a computer which you say that processor is a 32 bit processor that means you can represent information with the help of 32 bit. So, in that particular case you can look for that 32 bit standard. If your processor is your 64 bit then you can handle 64 bit together then what will happen when you are going to handle floating point numbers you can look for that 34 bit standard. And in that particular case what is the differences in case of your 32 bit it is your exponent is your 8 bit and in case of your 64 bit the exponent is your 11 bit. So, in case of range for 8 bit I am saying that we can go up to 10 to the power 77. Now, when we increase the exponent from 8 bit to 11 bit similarly range will also increase. Now, you can calculate what will be the range that we can handle when we are going to use 32 bit format and what is the range that we can use in your 11 bit format. Now, again you just see that for Mandisa part also now we are increasing from 23 bit to around 54 bit it seems because 64 minus 11 is your 53 minus 1 is for sine bit. So, 52 we are using 52 bits for the Mantisa part or significant part that means our accuracy will now going to increase for 22 bit we are getting up to 10 to the power minus 6 now here we are going to get many more. So, if we are having more number of bits range is more accuracy is also more. Now, this is the format IEEE 754 format this is your 32 bit format 1 bit is your sine bit 8 bit is for bias exponent and 23, 23 bit is for fraction. Similarly, for your double format this is your 64 bit. So, already I said that fractional part is your 30 to 52 bit, 11 bit is your bias exponent and 1 is for sine bit. So, I think if you have written any program in your change language I think we are having that one of the data type is your double. So, that means when we are going to work with the double data type it is a floating point representation and the representation is the double format of IEEE 754 format that means, we are going to use 64 bit to represent our number. Okay. On another case we can use 32 bit to represent our number. So, this is the format of representing 14 point number. So, we have seen how to represent numbers basically it is either integer number or real numbers. So, in case of real numbers generally we use floating point representation. There are some other code also there. So, it is your binary code already we have discussed about that access code access 128 or access 127. So, it is basically depends on the number of bits that we are using. So, if you are using 8 bit numbers then access will be your access 128 because to represent negative number as well as positive number what we do we store the positive number then we subtract something from that particular number to get the exact number. 
you are having another cold coat called gray coat. So, this is just for your disinformation I am giving it. So, what will happen this is a coat developed. So, the two consecutive number is going to have a very minimum signal sense. Say as for example, if I say that this is your 8 in binary and what is your 9? This is 9 and what is your 10? What is your 11? So, this is 10, this is 11. In that particular case, when I am going to get next consecutive number, you just see that there is a change of bit pattern in 3 position. Okay. In some cases, it may be more also if we are going to look for more number of this. So, gray coat is conceived just to minimize this particular changes of bits when we go from one number to the next number. So, for that what basically this gray coat is going say if this is my 0 then next number is 1. So, basically 0 and 1 is going to represent decimal 0 and decimal 1. So, 0 0 say if I am going to have 2 bits number. Now, this is representation 0 this is representation 1 then I am going to have representation 2. So, in case of representation 2 what we are going to do basically? So, in your binary number system it is your 0 0 0 1 1 0. So, when I am going to from 1 to 2 there is a change of bit position in 2 defined position, but here we want to minimize it. So, we want to just set up there will be changes is only 1 position. Then what we are going to do? We will take the mirror image of these things 1 and that most significant bit we are going to get 1 over here because already 2 zeros are there now we are going to have this thing. So, if I take mirror image of this thing, so I am going to get 1 0 and 1. So, this is going to represent 2, this is going to represent 3. So, this is now changing. So, here 2 is 1 0 and 3 is 1 1 in binary number, but in gray code it is different. Now, when I will go for more numbers then what will happen say 3 bits number then what I am going to get take the mirror image of these things that this one. So, I am going to get 1 0. So, this is 1 0. So, this 1 will become 0 will become 1 now. So, this is change in only 1 position. So, this is my 4. So, this is mirror image of 1 and 1 it is coming over here and this bit is 1. Now, it will be 0 1 1 and this is your 0 0 1. So, this is 4 5 6 7 in decimal. So, this is the concept that we use in our gray code. So, basic principle is to minimize the number of changes of bit when we are looking for two consecutive numbers. You just see that if you take these two consecutive numbers, there is change in only one bit position. If you take these two consecutive numbers, there is a change in only bit position. If you consider these two consecutive numbers, the change of bit position is only one. So, this is gray code. In some system, we may use gray code also. Another one is your BCD, binary coded decimal. Basically, what will happen? We are accustomed with the decimal number system. Now, when you convert something from decimal to binary, it is slightly taking some time or getting a different pattern. As for example, say if I am going to have 12, then bit pattern is your 1 0, sorry, bit pattern is 1 1 0 0, 8 plus 4 12. But in binary coded decimal, what we are going to do? Digit wise, we are going to convert to the binary, and for that, for every digit we are having total 10 symbol 0 to 9 and to represent 10 symbol we need at least 4 bits of information. You just see that it is your number of symbols and number of bit pattern is related to each other. So, with your n bit we can go up to 2 to the power n different representation already I have mentioned it. So, with 3 bit I can go up to 2 to the power 3 is 8 that means 0 to 7. So, we are having 2 more numbers 8 and 9 for that we need one more bit. So, we need 4 bit of information and this is basically in binary coded decimal this digit if 12 this will be converted to binary or coded to binary digit wise. So, this is 1 is going to represent 0 0 0 1 and 2 will be represented by 0 0 1 0. Like that if I am going to represent 75 in your BCD, then it will be your 0 1 1 1 and 5 is your 0 1 0 1. So, 7 5. So, this is the binary coded decimal. So, in some system we can use these things also 
and what will happen? Our calculation will become easier because that means you will feel that we are working with a decimal system itself. Now, in computers, we have to work with the character also because in numbers we are doing some arithmetic operation, but sometimes we have to work with numbers because now you just see that in everywhere we are using computer, you are writing letters also with the help of computer. You have to say how to represent A, how to represent B and like that. So, here also in this presentation you are saying that character representation, seeing that character C, H, A, R, A like that, but inside computer when we are storing it, we cannot store C as it is. Everything has to be stored as a binary number, not only binary number, it is either high voltage and low voltage, already I have mentioned this thing. So, for every character we must have to assign some code. So, we are having several codes to represent character. The first uh, basic code is your ASCII, A S C I I, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So, this is the first code it is developed. I think some of you may be knowing that when I am going to represent, I think capital A or lower case A, then we need some number. I think to represent one of these number is your 65 in decimal numbers. Okay. So, for every number we are assigning a code and we are storing that particular code when we are going to store information. So, FCD is your extended binary coded decimal interchange code. This is the extension of ASCII because what will happen in ASCII? It is basically represented with 7 bits. So, in case of 7 bit, we can go up to 128 different character because we are having total 128 representation from all zeros to all 1. So, we can go up to 128 characters, but in case of FCDIC, FCDIC it is just extended by 1 more bit, it is an 8 bit code. So, that means my character size is increased by 2. So, it is becoming now 256. In SK, it is your 128, it is your FCD 256. But if you look into the entire universe, entire globe, there are a lot of symbols. We should not only think about that English alphabet, we should not think about only that numerals and the signs like plus, minus, and like that. But there are several languages, and in every language, they are having several characters. Like if you talk about India, we can talk about the Dev Devanagari script or Hindi language. So, they are having several characters. Now, we have to give unique code to each and every character. So, this is one language I am talking about in India, Hindi, but we are having several languages like that. If you go to down south, you are going to get Karnari, you are going to get Tamil, if you come towards East, you are going to get Assamese, you are going to get Bengali, if you go to north, then you are going to get some Haryanabi some Marathi language also in the west like that. So, several languages are there and several characters are there. This is I am talking about in India, but globally that language is much more. So, finally, we want to represent each and every symbol, every character through computer and we need a bigger code. With 8 bit or 7 bit we cannot do it. So, for that the concept of Unicode is coming into picture a unique number is provided for each character. So, if you want to represent some character in computer, then you have to approach this body, then by looking into the nature of the character, they will give a unique code to this particular symbol or particular character and that is that can be used in computer. So, to character representation, now the standard is your unicode. So, this is the different way we can represent our information, but finally, everything will be converted to the binary code only and computer works on binaries. So, these are the representation issues. Now, just say I am giving some test item with respect to this particular representation, information representation and your number system. Now, the first test item I am giving that consider the decimal number 175. Write the equivalent of this number in base 2, base 5, base 8 and base 16. So, if you can do this thing, this is basically the objective one of this particular unit that means, if you can solve this thing that means, you can say that we have achieved the objective one of this particular module unit. What are the different ways to represent integer in computer indicate their advantages and disadvantages. So, this is the objective two we are talking about the integer representation. So, already we have discussed those issues may be this is your sign magnitude form, ones complements form, twos complements form. The question three 
is it possible to handle integer of any limit in a particular computer if not why this is meeting the objective 1 and 2 i think already i have mentioned in my lecture if i give you some tasks to work to pen and paper you can go for any limit but in computer we are always restricted by range now why why it is restricted by range now you just look into it i think i have mentioned in my lectures you just refer some books also and see why it is restricted Qu question 4 how to represent real numbers in computer this is the meeting the objective 3 i think already we have discussed basically you concentrate on it poly format because this is the standard how the precision of a real number is defined again we have discussed this thing so basically it is basically number of bit patterns that we are using in the significant or mantissa depending on that we can say what is the precision question 6 how to handle the character representation in computer this is the objective 4 of this particular unit already i have mentioned in my last slide so now here i can give you one more task or just to look into it what is the size of the unicode i have not mentioned over here deliberately i have not mentioned it now you find out the information what is the number of bits that we use to represent any character in unicode and if there is any format is there you try to look into that format also okay so these are the test item you first try to look into it and i hope that at least you are kind of getting idea or having idea how we are going to represent information in computer and how we are going to work with this particular information with that i wind up this particular lecture thank you all